Welcome to the story of the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Like you've never heard it before. This story isn't told by the one Dragonborn that masters all, but told to you through the eyes of many different characters. From the good and the bad and those in between. From soldiers on both sides of the Civil War. From warriors seeking honor. To mages seeking great power. To thieves seeking to get wealthy. To assassins seeking fear. And those who are cursed children of the night seeking justice and those who were simply in the wrong place at the right time. Welcome to the story of the Elder Scrolls Skyrim, told to you by all of us that take part in it. We hope you enjoy. If you like these stories, chuck us a subscribe and your credit card number. Hey, come on now, that's not in the script. <laughs> hope you guys enjoy. Have a good one. Chapter 34, War in the East. All across Skyrim, civil war rages while the Empire fights to restore peace to these lands, to snuff out the infection of rebellion. No matter where these Stormcloaks go, we shall follow. We'll fight them in the snows of the Pale, the forest of Falkreath, the marshes of Morthal, or the plains of Whiterun. It doesn't matter, the Legion will follow them, and put this foolish rebellion down. Even now, vampires are brave enough to attack Legionaries out during the day. What kind of madness is this? I've heard reports of this happening all across Skyrim. Vampires are getting too brave. I've fought all across Skyrim. Anywhere Legat Ricca sends the 99th Cohort, we shall march towards any rebel Jarl who has betrayed the Empire. By the end of winter, we'll have Windhelm surrounded. All we need is the Rift, then we can march into Eastmarch. Ulfric will know his days are numbered then. But there's still much land to take. There's still a burning passion from the East to tear down the Empire. Their call for independence has cost them enough Nord lives. When will they learn? There's no beating the Imperial Legion. The rebels brave enough to fight the Legion are normally left to the wilds. When will our enemies learn? You don't mess with the Empire, or you pay dearly for it. As long as I hold breath, I'll fight the enemies of the Emperor. Any and all that lift a blade against the Empire will fall to the Legion's blades. The Stormcloaks will learn this the hard way. We shall soil Skyrim with their dead. Now it's time. Time to make plans of the Rift. We need the Rift before winter comes, and it's only a month away. We'll be able to keep Ulfric scared and busy defending East March while we surround Windhelm. We need the Rift. We need to regain control of it before we can march on Windhelm without worry about our rear guard. Make your way to our camp in the Rift. We have a few surprises for the Stormcloaks lined up. General Tullius gave us the all clear. The 99th cohort will march on the rift, and we'll take her. I have the best the Empire has to offer. The Stormcloaks don't stand a chance. Stormcloak spies will see us marching in great number, so we'll make it look like we're heading into East March. Then Ulfric will set a trap for us, but we'll head south and scale the mountains into the rift. The last time I was part of such a great battle was defending Whiterun. That was seven months ago. Ever since then, we've patrolled, defended smaller holds, and taken them. Once we took one, the rebels took another, and so we danced across Skyrim. Half of my forces are stuck in the Reach defending Markarth against the Forsworn and rebel raids. But now I get to attack a major hold for the Stormcloaks. I won't fail. We can't afford to fail. If we take the Rift, we have the war over in three or so months. Then we can prepare for our real enemy, the Aldmeri Dominion. The rebels are fools. They waste lives fighting us while the Dominion builds their numbers. While we're busy here snuffing out rebellion, the Elves ready themselves for round two. If the rebels could win this war, I bet the Dominion would attack straight away. Ulfric thinks he stands a chance against the Elves. If the Fifth Legion was beaten and sent packing, the Dominion would attack, and there wouldn't be enough Imperial soldiers to defend Cyrodiil. Any Imperial soldier left gets absorbed into the Dominion. The Dominion would become the Empire. High Rock would surrender, seeing no other way. Then the Dominion would take Hammerfell. They would then make a deal with the Dark Elves, then conquer Blackmarsh. Skyrim would be left on its own. The Nords are a strong people, but I don't see them fighting all Tamriel on their own. And a Tamriel ruled by Elves wouldn't be good for the races of men. But that's if the Nords could win this war. Each day we get closer to Windhelm. Before the year's done, we'll have won this war, and Ulfric's head will adorn a spike in the Imperial City. But that's if the Nords could win this war. Each day we get closer to Windhelm. Before the year's done, we'll have won this war. 
and Ulfric's head will adorn a spike in the Imperial City. While we attack Fort Amol, the Stormcloaks will think we're off to Windhelm. We'll head south into Riften and make our way to Fort Greenwall and ready our attack on Riften. The Imperial Vanguard should always be the front of any legion. Once the enemies of the Empire see us, they know their fight is over. Send a message to Ulfric Stormcloak and the rebel Jarls who support him. That message is this. Damn Any Stormcloak king of rebels. who denies the Emperor will wake one morning to face Ulfric the Legion staring down his gates. Ulfric. And on it's that disgusting. day, we will confiscate his city and restore the rule of law to his lands. But make no mistake, what we do here today, we do for Skyrim and her people. By cutting out the disease of this rebellion, we will make this country whole again. The approach to Riften is guarded by watchtowers. They will be full of archers. Move fast and stay low. They'll have barricades set. <coughs> Keep pressing forward. The faster we take them out, the faster we can claim this city is ours. Ready now. Everyone with me. For the Empire. For the Legion. For the Empire, for the Legion! Any rebel that defends Riften this day shall not see tomorrow. The Legion will bring peace back to Skyrim. Any Stormcloak standing in our way will fertilize Skyrim with their corpse. We shall spare none. We don't waste food on traitors or give them the chance to betray the Empire once more. All that wear the blue shall lay in a pool of red. Where's Anurion? She's watching over the others. 
Look alive. Stop right now. there, where I can see you. Riften denies the Emperor. You are here illegally. Stand down, and you will be arrested and tried in the morning. Is this what it's coming Resist, to? and you, you will die. Any who resist the Empire shall meet its wrath. The Empire doesn't surrender to traitors or to anybody. Enough! Stand down! The city is yours. Mercy. I think I like living here. So enters Maven Blackbriar. The glint of Imperial coin in her eyes. So tell me, what's the price for a woman's integrity these days? You never were able to see the forest for the trees, were you? We Nords were proud warriors once, and we still could be, evidenced by the men and women who fought and died bravely today. You could see that if you had any faith left in that black heart of yours. But no, you're content to snatch scraps falling off the Emperor's table. Hey, Fine. Take my home. Take my city. May it burn down around you. A bit melodramatic, even for you, Lila. It's surprising. The Pack your things and go. go. Rift and under One the imperial day, flag. You can see past that can't be their first interests. choice. You will realize that we were right, and this, this is all wrong. If you two are finished with the touching homecoming, there's a city in chaos out there. Jarl Blackbriar. I must admit, I do like the sound of that. And don't worry about any rioting, Legate. I have it under control. We will soon begin publicly executing captured men. That should send a clear message to the people. Yes, but not likely the one you intend. Oh? <laughs> I don't expect anyone to miss my meaning. Come, Legate. There's much to do. The day brought the Empire victory. We are so much closer to ending this Stormcloak Rebellion. We cleaved through many rebels and brought them another loss. Each Imperial soldier that gave their lives on this day shall be remembered as heroes. Including my own legionaries, like Linnea Arius and Adgor Lassesius, and Akana Kalichi and Jari Nefesius. Akana Kalichi joins her sister who died defending Whiterun. True heroes of the Empire, with our victory in the Rift, Maven Blackbriar became Jarl for the Empire. She gave us some estate just off from Riften to hold the 99th Cohort, so we're close to protect Riften. We're able to stay here if some of my soldiers tend to the bees and send off Maven's honey to Riften. It's said Maven killed off the old owner because he cut her out of a deal. I'll make sure my soldiers don't end up on her bad side. With winter coming, all we have to do is hold Riften. The rebels will try for her soon before the snows fall. While I'm stationed here, I hope Luca is doing well. I'll be stuck here for some time. She has a caretaker there after all. I just need to make it out of this war alive. Or will I end up with all the others of the 99th cohort who fell in battle? Will I one day join the legionaries who died in service to the Empire and Skyrim? Will I die before I find out what happened to my sister? If I do die, everything I own will go to my daughter Luca. She will be looked after no longer needing to beg on the streets. But I'll do my best in winning and surviving this war. Welcome to another outro. This is just an update kind of on the Civil War, what's going on. Well, kind of first person with it, you know? Every other character you've seen kind of wanders around it that isn't Sigan, that isn't uh, Centaurus and others. This is in the midst of the civil war fighting across Skyrim. Now this, I kind of want to show the vampires, you know, that they're kind of unnatural at the moment, you know, like they're coming out during the daytime, they're attacking legionaries. Vampires are like cats, mate, like feral cats. They see someone, you know, that can threaten them, they're out of there, they're gone. You know, they're attacking the hunt during the night in small numbers. They're, they're rodents pretty much, and now they're attacking legionaries out during the day, and it's, it's happening all around Skyrim. I think I first started showing this off with um, Cecilia's background character quest of Zarita called the fledgling now yeah like I just want to show up the civil war kind of the meat grinder of it you know what's happening across Skyrim and all that sort of stuff and you know I think winter's settling in um, about a month of my game winter will be here and with winter comes not just very harsh elemental weathers where Skyrim freezes over all of it it also you know the sun goes down quicker 
and there's more and during the day is shielded by you know bad blizzards and stuff like that so the things that hate the sun like vampires and undead are going to wander because there's nothing there that harasses them or annoys them which builds up for a future vampire questline makes that questline a bit more immersive and sort of slows down the civil war because Yes, Nords are great, but the Imperial Legion isn't just Nords, it's, it's anyone that will join us, Imperials and Nords, and it will slow them down. If they go marching into the blizzards with, say, 40 men, that's 40 men that are going to freeze to death on the side of the road. You know, Nords aren't cold-proof, they've got a lot of resistance against it, but they're not going to survive a blizzard out there, and neither are the Stormcloaks. They're going to hold, they're going to bunker down, they might do small raids, they might take a place over if it's warm, or something like that. The idea of this is to basically take the rift, take control of it before winter comes, so they can slowly wiggle around and hopefully, by the end of it, in their in their eyes, surround uh, Windhelm. And if they surround Windhelm during the winter. They'll run into food that people might riot. It will be a get in there and attack them and beat them. Now, I'm, honestly, I, I love the Civil War, man. When it comes to Skyrim, because there's ne there's never enough reasons to like take this many followers with me. You know, into, into the war. Like, like this is not... Like, when the Civil War's done, what am I going to do? It's going to be very boring. Like, I can't take this many followers of me to go attack a bandit fortification. That just doesn't seem very worth it. You know, I don't know what I'll do. I don't know if I even want to play the game after that. But with this, with the Civil War, I'm able to take, like, say, 40 or so soldiers and just go marching and have an absolute meat grinder. This is also going to kind of show people, like, what my game's like, you know, when I'm playing as Centaurus or Sigund, when I'm fighting in the Civil War, it's just messy, man. It's like, it's not like a small little 15v15 battle. It's like a battle of, like, 80 dudes just trying to murder each other. You know, it's it's an absolute meat grinder. And with mods like, um, Maximum Carnage, you know, with mage spells and power hits basically mutilating people, it just makes it so much more, like, I guess, grittier, um, gory. You know, like, you'll see people exploding and all that sort of, like, that right there. Like, that shit's nuts, man. Like, there's bits and pieces of people all over the place. It's just carnage. It's absolute war. It's, it's, it's hell. And that's kind of what I want to show up this, like, with Centaurus and that. That they're in the actual middle of the Civil War. And it's, it's bloody and messy. With other characters, you might see that these guys are kind of watching it happen in the distance. But here you get to see the full effect of the Civil War in my game. Sometimes it's not so easy to record because it will either crash or freeze. But surprisingly, the most of all this was actually back to back. I didn't have to reset anything from the Battle of uh, Windhel Wildhelm Towers to Fort Amal and Fort Greenwall and even the Battle of Riften. Um, not in Riften, though that was a bit of a messy one, but it worked out pretty well. I just keep forgetting to hide my UI, which is a problem. But, yeah, this is kind of the stuff that I love about the Civil War. Now, Centauros, right? Centauros was my character. He still is my character, in a sense. And, you know, like, he was always my Dragonborn, always my avatar into the Elder Scrolls Skyrim. I remember picking the preset for uh, the Imperials of 05. And I think I made his name up in Markov somewhere, like, years later, or like maybe 2014 or 13. And it's just, it's always been my character into the Elder Scrolls. His face has changed quite a bit, but this has been the permanent one since Special Edition. Um, and, yeah, it's just, he's, he doesn't feel like my character anymore exactly, you know? Like, he was, my decisions in, in, in Skyrim, like, what I would do in this situation. And I, I've obviously played Oblivion first, Empire is my, fa like, is my faction, I love Cyrodiil, so I'm sort of like in tune with the whole Imperial thing. And so the Imperials are my race, and, and yeah, all that sort of good stuff. But Centaurus has become his very own character. He's a very upstark, very sort of proud and arrogant Imperial soldier that believes the Empire is supreme, that no one stands a chance against him, that he will fight on, that anyone that insults the Empire, so insults the Emperor, brandishes a blade against, you know, his empire shall meet their death. He's very, you know, he's very one-sided of a coin. Um, you know, of the imperial side of the coin. He, he believes any and all that fight against his empire deserve death. You know, and that Skyrim is part of the empire, that he will bring peace back to Skyrim. That the rebels have caused this unnecessary war and you know, this rebellion and just cause anguish amongst his citizens. He believes the Stormcloaks are evil. You know, or they're, they're bad. They're fighting for a false king and all this sort of crap. And he's very, you know, very proud. He wants to, 
He wants to, when this war is done, if he lives through it, be notable. Be someone known amongst the Empire, you know? To one day be able to maybe be an Elder Council member or someone greatly feared and respected amongst the Empire. Like, you know, the character that he based himself off, Centaurus Tharn, way back in ESO's game, which is my ESO character. Um, and, yeah, it's just, it's... He used to be my character, but now he's kind of his own character, and I like it. You know, he's kind of created himself, in a way. Um, I'll tell you what, these voice files are crazy, man, because I remember when I was dating this um, chick a few years back, we had to, I would watch Teen Wolf, and then I remember hearing, like, this, like, the blind dude walk into the room, like, the blind alpha werewolf, and then he spoke, and I've gone, <gasps> That's the male soldier voice from Skyrim! Like, this happens to me all the time. Anything I watch, if I hear a voice and it sounds familiar, it instantly resorts me back to Skyrim. Now, yes, he's killing people that have surrendered, and to him, you know, they're traitors. They're not worth anything. Why feed them? They're just traitors. Why feed them for them to one day break free and basically take all their shit, you know, you know and fight them again? Now, some weird things happened to here. I didn't, I, like, I tried to record this one like five times. I got sick of it, so I was just like, fuck it. We'll keep it. I'm, just, I'm done. I will put a hole through my screen. This filthy friggin' bard just rocks up behind me, like carrying a tray in the middle of a battlefield. Unimmersive, but a couple other unimmersive things happen, like the Thelmor rocking up straight away due to another mod, which basically puts... And this, I think Maven went like scale 10, and, and then she kind of reverted back to normal after a second or two. Uh, I think that was Maven. <laughs> but other than that, um, I just wanted this bit done, so I didn't waste my time trying to record it 15,000 times. Now, if all the followers that I bring, they do die, and I will and do bury them. You know, these are characters that I've created to make my armies a bit more personalized. They're not just presets or boring Imperial soldiers. They're named characters, um, and so they play a part. And, of course, that chick that died, her sister died in the Battle of Whiterun. Now, this right here, this also plays part in my major story. My Thieves Guild character, um, during her first chapter, I think a second, like, her first Thieves Guild chapter, um, she was tasked with going in here and doing a job in the Golden Glow, and she, she killed the owner. And of course, uh, Centaurus remarks that Maven had, had had him killed when she didn't, but it kind of did in a certain sense of way, since Maven kind of hired the job. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's been empty since then, you know, like ever since the Golden Glow Estate owner, Melbourne, I think his name was, I don't know, remember his name, was killed, it's basically lied vacant, you know, um, and it's taken a while for these places to repair, for the beehives to repair and stuff like that. Maven's like, yep, I'm the Yarl now, you guys basically, you know, took the city, have this estate. But, if you could kindly please look after the bees, produce some of the honey, and take it to Riften when it's ready, that'd be nice, thank you. So they're kind of like, working for Maven. And again, she is now the Yarl, which will play beneficial, uh, be more beneficial to my Thieves Guild character, and a certain Doverkin, when they kind of interact with, um... Riften, in a sense that she'll be living there close, soonish. But yeah, it kind of, I, I just want to build the story up, you know, it's, it's got many different oh, charts, you know, I've got to go through and the right timing and the right place, the right, it's a mess. It's like, you know, I think most people that write their own stories, they write the shit up on boards and they link them all together. I just got to have it in my head. <laughs> um, and hopefully it works out, and so far I think it has. But anyway, uh, oh yeah, it's got to skip past all this crap. Now, I've shown this off in other videos. Oop, my bad. Right here. I've shown this off in other videos. This is kind of, you know, what happens to those fallen soldiers. And those guys you saw dead with the head mutilated and all that sort of stuff, or decapitated, they're actually buried here too. So I, I went and buried them, and I <laughs> got some rain for a bit more of a somber mood. But this is where they end up. You know, and the first ones are from the Battle of Whiterun to the current Battle of the Rift. Uh, Riften. So, I don't want to get too big because I run out of room in the future. And when I start to run out of room, I know it's time to close the story for the Civil War. Um, but yeah, it, it's kind of... It's... This is just kind of where they, where they end up. You know, all of them. And I like to decorate or name or give them a eulogy or something like that. Something on their stone. Not all of them. Takes too long sometimes. So just bury them or maybe write it later. I don't bloody know. But this is kind of... You know, if you're going to have a personalised army with unique faces and unique names, you might as well send them off in a way you know. And since, you know, we took White Run, Yale gave us a place to bury our dead. And this will be that for the 99th cohort, uh, led under Centauros and Was Marulia, 
um, before she was captured, and now, I forgot her name, and a couple other vanguards, under the command of Legate Ricker. But anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this story. Uh, let me know, because you know, there's a lot going on in this, there's absolute massive carnage. And if um, there's anything, any questions you got, I'd uh, love to answer them in the comments. And even if you've got any grubs about it, you know, if, like, part of storytelling, it's not everyone's going to like it. If you don't like it, let me know. Anyway, I'm out of here. Look out yourselves, and I'll uh, see another story.